Welcome to the window washer problem. We're going to apply both conditions for equilibrium, net torque equals zero and net force equals zero, in order to determine uh, two things. How much tension is in the cable on the left that supports the scaffold that the window washers stand on, and how much tension is in the cable on the right. So we'll call them T1 and T2. So one of the window washers, Bob, will say has a mass of 80 kilogram and his partner Joe has a mass of 70 kilograms and the bucket of soapy water that they're using to wash the windows has a mass of 20 kilogram the whole scaffold that they stand on has a mass of 150 kilograms and the scaffold has a length of 12 meters so let me give you some distances as well we'll say that Bob is standing about two and a half meters from the left cable. The bucket of soapy water is seven meters from the left side and Joe's standing about four meters from the right side. So we've got to figure out the tension in each of these cables. Now together the tensions have to add up. If I add tension one plus tension number two that has to account for all of the mass added together times gravity. In other words, the tension up has to equal the force of gravity pulling down. And that's really a way of saying that the net force on the system is equal to zero. If the net force is zero, then the total upward force is just as great as the total downward force. So we'll use this actually in the second part of our solution. Let's use net torque equals zero as part one of our solution to this problem. So all the values are given again here below. Okay, so step one, if net torque is equal to zero, that's the same as saying the sum of all the clockwise torques balance out the sum of all the counterclockwise torque. So what is all the clockwise torque in this example? Let's see. The sum of clockwise torque. Well, we have to set an axis of rotation before we can calculate any torques. So I'll give you a few options. One option would be consider the left end, the location of the axis of rotation. We could also consider the center of mass as the axis of rotation, or we can consider the right end as the axis of rotation. But the truth is, if this scaffold is in equilibrium, then it's not rotating about any of those axes. So we're free to pick any axis we want and then say that the net torque is zero. So it's probably best to put your axis of rotation at the location of one of the two unknown forces. So tension one is unknown and tension two is unknown. We know the force that's acting at this point, we can say that the weight of the whole scaffold is a force of gravity that pulls downward at the center of mass. So let's pick either the left end or the right end as our axis of rotation. So how about this? We'll settle on the left end as the axis. In that way, the tension in that cable is not torque producing because it would have no lever arm relative to this axis. So now there's how many clockwise torques? Let's see, the weight of Bob would pull down with a lever arm and that would make the whole scaffold want to rotate clockwise. The weight of the entire plank wants to rotate clockwise. The weight of Joe adds a clockwise torque and the weight of the bucket of suds. So everybody standing on the scaffold plus the scaffold itself tends to make it want to rotate about an axis on the left end so the only thing that produces a counterclockwise torque is the tension in cable number two pulling upward okay so total clockwise torque that's going to be the mass of Bob times gravity so that's force to get torque, we have to multiply force times lever arm. So we'll multiply time, we'll call it R subscript B. Say so that's the distance uh, Bob stands from the axis of rotation. We should also multiply times sine of theta. But in this case, the angle between 
the lever arm and the force vector is 90 degrees, and that's going to be the case for all of our force vectors. They all have a lever arm that's perpendicular to the force, so I'm going to leave out sine of the angle. So there it is. There's one of your clockwise torques, plus how about the mass of the entire scaffold multiplied by g, that's force, and then we have to multiply it times a lever arm. That lever arm would be L over 2 because the location of the center of mass is in the geometric center, plus the mass of the bucket times gravity times the lever arm for the bucket, plus the mass of Joe times gravity times the lever arm for Joe. Okay. What about the net counterclockwise torque? So there's only one more force. We identified it. It's the upward force from the tension in cable number two, and that would make this whole thing want to rotate in a counterclockwise direction. So the one and only counterclockwise torque, what is this? Force multiplied by lever arm. Now that would be the entire length of the scaffold. And then this is also sine of 90. So we'll leave that out. So if it's in equilibrium, the clockwise and counterclockwise torques are equal. So we've got step 2 and step 3. So in step 4, we'll put it together. The counterclockwise torque, due to the tension in the right cable, has to equal, let's see, if I'm going to equate it to the counterclockwise torque, I can factor out. There's a G in every single term. So let's just factor that out. This is equal to G times mass of Bob, lever arm for Bob, plus mass of scaffold times L over 2, plus mass of bucket, lever arm for bucket, plus mass of Joe, lever arm Joe. So if I want to get the tension in cable 2, I just have to divide both sides of the equation by the length of the scaffold. Well, here I can do an easy trick. Okay, so now we just need to plug in the values and see what we get in step 6. Get the tension in the right cable. Let's round up and let G equal 10. So 10 meters per second squared, which is the same thing as 10 newtons per kilogram, multiplied by 80 times 2.5, plus 150 times, let's see, half the length of the scaffold would be 6, right? Plus 20 times 7, plus 70 times, now, I'm not going to say 70 times 4, because that's how far Joe's standing from the right end. We need to know how far he is from the left end. So I guess this would have to be 8, since the whole scaffold is 12 meters long. Okay, so plus 70 times 8, and all of this is divided by 12. Let's put the units in, that's 12 meters. This is all kilograms, meters, kilograms, meters, and so on. So the meters cancel out. The kilograms cancel out. And we're just left with newtons. Grab your calculator, see what you get. If you plug it all in without making any mistakes, you should get 1,500 newtons as the tension in the cable on the right. 1,500 newtons. Okay, now we have to find the tension in the left cable. Well, we could do the exact same work. We could just move the axis of rotation to here and then recalculate. But you can see that takes quite a few steps and a lot of computation. So let's do it an easier way. Instead of considering the fact that net torque equals zero a second time by making a new axis, 
let's consider that net force has to equal zero. And we've already written the expression that covers that, right? The two upward tension forces have to equate to all the downward force. So T1 plus T2 has to equal all the mass added up multiplied by G. That means T1 is the combination of mass multiplied by G minus T2, and we already know that T2 is 1,500 newtons. So let's see, what's all the mass multiplied by G? This would give us, uh, what is it? Oh, 80 plus 20 plus 70 plus 150 and then G will round up and call it 10. This is all kilograms. That's newtons per kilogram. Okay, I believe this all comes out to 3,200 newtons. Double check me on that one. So T1 is equal to 3,200 newtons minus 1,500 newtons, which gives us 1,700 newtons. Now is that reasonable? Why is it that the tension in the left is greater than the tension on the right? How come they're not both 1,600 and 1,600? Well, Bob is standing closer to the left side and is a little bit heavier, and Joe is standing farther from the right side, and he's a little bit lighter, so it makes sense that the tension in the left side would uh, be a little bit stronger than the tension in the right side.